Hey, welcome back to the Candid Frame YouTube channel. Now, a rare thing happened last week. It rained in LA. Not a whole lot. There was this big storm that was supposed to come through, which kind of passed us over. It was a little wet, but not much. And God knows that we need the rain down here. We've been in a, a drought for the longest, longest time. But when I heard about the threat of rain, I started thinking about, well, I'm probably going to need my umbrella, and I had no idea where it was. But the thought of trying to find my umbrella sparked this idea in my head about the, the role of umbrellas in some, in some photographs. And so I started looking through our Flickr group, and I started picking up shots where umbrellas played a really prominent role in the composition. And I thought, wow, that's, that's a good enough subject for, for the video. So I chose three images, and that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, here we have a shot by Extends Go. Uh, this was created with an Olympus EM5 at 640th of a second, F8, ISO 200. Now, this is a, a wonderful image, which looks like it was shot here in Los Angeles. Um, the light here is phenomenal. I, I think that this is late afternoon light in, uh, in Chinatown, and you have these long, elongated, 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 I always have difficulty pronouncing that word, but you have those long shadows that extend across the sidewalk and which backlight her, this woman here, with this red umbrella and this red outfit. And it just produces a really wonderful, well, wonderful scene. The light and the shadow play here is enough to, to play with but you get this woman here wearing all this red and with this red umbrella, and you get an amazing, an amazing shot. So the, the anchor of the shot is her, obviously. And her red outfit alone would complement all the sort of bluish, cool tones that exist throughout the frame. You see the blue of the sky, the, uh, the, uh, the skyscrapers, the blue of the shade, and... Uh, you know, even the sort of bluish uh, color of the of the pole here, you have more sort of yellowish earth tones around here. And you have this yellow and a little bit of red here for this one-hour photo place, which I, I can't believe they still have one-hour photo places. But nevertheless, you have all those sort of dull, yellow, bluish tones, and then you have her walking down the street, and she just pops out, out of the frame. And if she didn't have the umbrella, the red would still be a prominent element in the shot. The umbrella does a remarkable thing. The umbrella helps to frame her within this scene because you can see all these lines and shapes that are behind her. And those things would have been the immediate background to her. And she would not have it as easily as popped out as well as she does here if it wasn't for the framing device of the umbrella, which is one of the things that an umbrella can be used for depending on where the camera is in relation to the subject. Here, she's wonderfully framed here. So her, her face, her head, her shoulders, you know, the upper part of her body is wonderfully defined here. Uh, it's great that her, her sweater is slightly darker in relationship to the red here of the background. And one of the other things that I, I really like about the presence of the umbrella, the ribs of the umbrella itself, and how you have these repeating lines that help guide the eye straight to her. And I really like these other elements in the scene. I mentioned the, the sign here with that yellow and the red, especially the red here that complements this. But I like this girl, you know, running, you know, through the scene and we almost lose her here. I don't mind the fact that she's partially obstructed by what appears to be a telephone pole on the left. I kind of like the energy, especially the way her, her ponytail is flying and helping to fill up this frame. I, I think she does a lot in, in order to provide this, a sense of depth to the shot because this image relies on a lot of layers. We have the light pole, the telephone pole, then we have the girl, then we have the woman, then we have the secondary figures in the background, then we have the signage, then we have the skyscrapers. It's layer upon layer upon layer, which makes for a more complex and a more interesting interesting frame. But it's the way 
that the photographer here uses the umbrella to frame her and leverages the incredible red color that we have here to make for one really stunning shot. Okay, here we have a shot by Don Springer. This was created with a Fujifilm X-Pro2 at 2 50th of a second, F4, ISO 320. Now, here is a, a shot that's really interesting. Obviously, the umbrella plays a prominent role in the overall composition. But what I really liked about this shot, as compared to a lot of the other shots that I was looking at, was that he really, he really considers his composition in a way that's really kind of remarkable. Because even though this subject here is obviously a, the prominent element in the shot, what happens is that he uses the reflection here of this same person to create a sort of mirror, mirroring effect. Not exactly of the umbrella and the upper portion of the subject, but the top portion and then the lower portion uh, of, this, of the same subject here within the shot. It really is sort of a, an interesting puzzle how he uses two, actually three separate planes to actually create a complete shot of one single figure. It's really a, a fun play visually that I really, really liked. And here, with respect to the umbrella, you can see how defined that umbrella is. Even though we don't get the complete umbrella here, you can see how that shape is so cleanly defined against the sidewalk area here, where we have these repeating lines and grids of squares that are, are mirrored here in the, in the windows here, where you have these wonderful triangles and lines and shapes. And, and you have a, a slight little gesture here not just with the lips and the nose, just below the edge of the umbrella, but the hands. It's really hard to discern. It's fairly, it's fairly subtle. I, I like I like the shot, but man, I if I it, when I looked at it, I would have loved to have one additional thing in this composition. I would have loved to have had like two feet moving out of the frame to the left, much like this play of legs here. It would have been great here because the the shot is a little imbalanced. Composition-wise, it's really weighted for the right-hand side of the frame, and there's really nothing here to balance it off. But I still like the shot because I like the extreme choice that Don made here in terms of the composition. This is this is the kind of shot where you know you risk failure, and so many people choose not to even try and make a photograph because they think, oh, it's not going to work. Right, I don't have something on the left-hand side, or I'm, you know, losing too much of the subject here, and so on and so forth. And I like the fact that Don took a risk. I like that he sort of pushed, you know, beyond the expectations of what traditionally makes a good composition, where you don't cut off cut off anything of the subject, you know, from from the photograph. You don't cut things off at the edges. You don't make them incomplete. You you put them in the center or use the, the rule of thirds. And here he's really playing with that. And it really is an interesting shot. And I really encourage Don and anyone else to really consider this shot the next time that you go out because there'll be another opportunity for something like this to happen. Maybe not exactly the same scene with an umbrella, but this whole idea of revealing parts of a subject using two or three completely different planes is just really, really cool. So kudos on that one. Okay, next we have a shot by a photographer whose name I am sure I am going to butcher. Uh, Mircea Di Tagwe. I hope I got that right, or close to so here we have another shot with a woman with an umbrella, black and white picture. So we don't have the benefit of color as we did in the previous shot. But the photographer here does leverage the shape and the lines created by the umbrella itself to complement this, this woman who is getting shade from, from the umbrella. Now one of the things when you're photographing someone uh, using an umbrella typically is that the umbrella does a variety of things besides protecting the person from rain or, or from the sun. From the photographer's point of view, what it does 
it can obscure important areas of the subject, particularly the face. And if the light, depending on where the light is coming from, it can actually create a level of shade underneath the umbrella that creates this level of contrast between that and the area outside of it. So you have this exposure difference. So if someone is using an umbrella on a bright sunny day in order to provide shade, and say they're using an abra- a black umbrella, the area beneath the umbrella might end up being at least a, a stop, if not more, less light, creating this underexposure for the subject that you really have to sort of remedy. And short of you know, getting close and using flash, you have to consider that when you're making your, your exposure. Here it's not so much of an issue because the, you know, the multicolor of the umbrella, which I assume is probably a red or a white or something like that, allows some light to pass through and provide ample illumination to her face. Now, the photographer is shooting up, probably shooting from the hip. So he gets most of her in the frame, which likely biased the exposure for her. So so that was a good thing. You can see that the hand, the right hand, is a little hot. It's a little overexposed because the, the sun is hitting that area. But it's it's still good enough to be able to retain detail, both in the highlights here, which you could burn down, and this area of shadow, especially her her hand. But by shooting up on this subject, he does what the umbrella does in the first shot, which is frame the subject. Because here you can see the ribs of the umbrella, you know, and these and these triangular patterns that help to frame her against this expanse of blue sky and what looks like you know, partial clouds in in the background. Had he photographed from eye level, especially as she pulled down on the edge of the umbrella to to improve the you know, the degree of shade that was uh, uh, you know protecting her face, there would be no detail here. You would get a shot where you get the her body and her hand pulling on there, which might or might not may or may not have made her an interesting shot, but you would have completely lost her face and the you know, and the extensive protection she's using to protect herself. She's got not only the umbrella, but she has this wide brim hat and these sunglasses. And she looks really, really interesting in the, in this shot. But you can see here how this, this shot is not just of a woman with an umbrella. You can see how graphic it is. You see the repetition of line and shape that are everywhere in this frame. And then you have those wonderful gestures. Not, not just the hand here pulling down at the edge of the umbrella, but the hand clutching, clutching the, you know, the, the stem of the umbrella. She's not holding it from the handle. She's holding it midway in order to afford herself even more protection from, from the sun. And I think it's just an interesting, that's just an interesting bit of detail uh, to note. And you can see just the way that even the hat ends up becoming another secondary framing device in terms of how it defines the outline of her face and especially the sunglasses here. So when you think about you know, photographing people with umbrellas, you have to think about, one, the challenges that it creates in terms of exposure. You have to think about where the sun is in relationship to the subject and to the umbrella and to the camera and make whatever calculations that you have to make in order to ensure you get a good exposure, not only of the subject, but but the overall scene. But the next thing you have to do is you have to consider not just the person holding an umbrella, but consider the umbrella itself as a visual element. Think about the pattern that is inherent to the umbrella, its shape, its line, and think about how it plays off of everything else in the frame. Is there a way of leveraging it in a way that results in an interesting photograph? Because I think when you do take that extra step to really consider how you want to use it, you'll make much more interesting photographs that I think will likely be much more successful than if you just took a snapshot of someone walking down the street holding an umbrella. Hope you found that helpful. Uh, As I mentioned last week, my new book is coming out. It's called Making Photographs, Developing a Personal Visual Workflow. It's a book that I've been working on for the past year, and it's a book 
for any photographer who's ever felt frustrated that they're that they're not being consistent with with their photography. So you've purchased an expensive camera, you've read books, you've looked at YouTube videos, and you make good photographs every once in a while, but you know sometimes you just don't feel like you know what you're doing. It seems like it's more luck than anything, and you question whether or not you're actually talented, whether you're any good at this thing. And I think that this book is sort of the remedy for that, because it teaches you a lot of the principles that I share on this YouTube channel in terms of how to see, how to parse a scene based on light and shadow, line and shape, color and gesture, and to use that information to make more informed choices in terms of how you compose and make a photograph, and to use those very same principles when it comes time to download the pictures on your, onto your computer and decide which images get the thumbs up and which ones get a thumbs down. So the book is available now, at least the ebook is available now with the soft cover uh, due out in December. But you can place an order now for the ebook or a pre order for the soft cover uh, by going to the Rocky Nook website. There'll be an, uh, a link below in the, uh, in the notes. And just make sure to use the promo code Pirello40 and you'll get 40% off the list price, which is a, a great, great bargain. And if you read the book and you like it, and you like it a lot, please write a review in the Amazon store, even if you don't buy it through Amazon, because those reviews are going to go a long way to helping me promote and market and market the book. And if you want to keep up with everything that I'm doing here at the Candor Frame, I just started a uh, email newsletter, which comes out usually every week. And uh, I'm not just going to be you know, promoting stuff that I'm doing with respect to books and workshops. I'm all also going to be trying to provide you content that I think is might be very helpful beyond what I do here on the YouTube channel or the Candid Frame. So if you go to the Candid Frame and you click here on the link that says newsletter, you can sign up. And for signing up, I will send you three ebooks that I've written over the last couple of years completely for free. And uh, I think you'll enjoy them. One of the books is a book about street photography, but the other two books I think are going to be very helpful to you as well. And uh, if you're interested in finding out more about the candid frame and not about sirens down the street, you can um, check out the candid frame. It's a podcast in which I interview photographers from all over the world, from various genres of photography. I just interviewed Pete Turnley, who is one of the legendary photojournalists of the 20th and 21st century. He photographed some of the most major events uh, in world history, and you know his photographs. And this is a great opportunity to learn the story behind the man, the photographs, and uh, you don't want to miss it, especially if you've never listened to an episode of The Candid Frame. You want to listen to this one. You can go to candidframe.com and, and check it out there. And if you like the videos, and you like what you're seeing here, well, please subscribe, hit that little bell to get notified with each new release. And thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next time.